Welcome back, uh, dear viewers. And in the segment of our program, we are going to talk about investment in human resources, especially youths, as uh, they are the driving force of any country's development. We are joined today by uh, Mrs. Uh, uh, Dina Odb. She's an interior designer, a member of an NGO organization. It's concerned uh, with services, with youth services. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Good morning, engineer Dina. And uh, of course, uh, uh, today we will be talking about uh, human uh, development and specifically uh, with regards to youth. And in light yes. of the uh, recent uh, eighth national youth conference that took place on Saturday, uh, we would like to know your opinion with regards to the importance of youth development and how can this be achieved? Actually, I think youth is the asset of any uh, country all over the world. And accordingly, it's very nice that now people are really concerned with what the youth are thinking and how they are aided and how they can aim for better futures. I mean, with uh, several NGOs now, along the one that I work with, it's very uh, much into action that we have to put them on the right paths. I mean, with their career, with their career developments, with how they are ready to be up into the working market or into further studies, they have to know where to go. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, uh, Engineer Dina, you were talking to us uh, about a, a conference uh, that you are preparing for in the coming days, and it is related uh, to youth. So, tell us more about this conference and topics expected to be tackled. Okay. We've had this conference last year, we've started it at our NGO, and we've started it last year, and it was basically aimed for people to know what to do with their lives. I mean, we have many graduates nowadays, or even before they're studying, I mean, university life, they don't know what to pursue and where to go, and what's the market requiring. I mean, we find so many people uh, really studying things that don't have a job later on, or our market does not supply a job for that, and vice versa. People study things, and then they come out to the market, and then they are put into other jobs jobs that they have to find themselves at or they don't have the skills that are required to pursue jobs in this direction. So this was the conference aim last year and actually we're repeating it again this year because it was a huge success and it's very much into uh, startups, uh, new businesses with young entrepreneurs, how they can um, just do something that's different than what's in the market to go out of the box of the regular jobs and how people can do things like this and accordingly it's summed up at the end with like a resolution sheet that tells you um, uh, not an agenda but I mean just a directory of what you can do and it's actually an interactive session throughout the day it's a very long day but it's usually a very interactive session where you get the feedback from the audience themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, there's also the uh, PLP or the Presidential mm -hmm. Leadership Program which is working on the same uh, thing. Yes. They are working on developing uh, youth uh, potentials and uh, helping them out to find uh, a way out or uh, uh, deciding on their uh, future and developing their skills. What other means can we help the youth with? I mean, this is what you prepare them with on country level, which is what you, what's needed as a main guidance. But then when it comes to the day-to-day -day job, then it's usually job fairs, which our NGO is so much into it as well, with um, uh, finding further study opportunities, scholarships, or at the end of the day, just to put them into the right track of where you can develop their human uh, capabilities and you can give them some resources where they can get back to. Mm -hmm. yeah. So... Uh, um how do you see the present keenness uh, to uh, communicate with, with youths and um, make them part of decision making in the country? Actually, I see that they are having a good chance now. Yes. I mean, they are embedded in every uh, single organization. I mean, business-wise, service-wise, everywhere, governmental even. You find so many people now that are youth with their new ideas, with mm. their new implementation ways. Not only ideas. I mean, it's how they manage things in a different way with a different age group. Mm. Yeah. So, mm. no, I think they have a good chance these mm. days. And uh, also, uh, with regards to the president's keenness on the youth, uh, we've seen a large number of youth conferences taking place uh, recently here in Egypt, national youth conferences, uh, the recent one, one on, uh, on Saturday. And we, uh, we had uh, for, uh, several international youth conferences also. How do you see the significance of gathering youth uh, from different parts and from different countries around the world? How can this help them? I think it's a big think tank. I mean, because with different countries, different continents, different cultures, 
everyone has a way that we've been brought up with and they do have actually a culture that tells you what to do so when you expose these people with a very huge diversity and exposure to different ideas this way I think it adds to them and they're always open to suggestions I mean they're not when you grow a little bit older then you always have things on your um, I mean on your backs that you cannot really just go change a career or just shift from one to the other when they see such things I think it gives them a better exposure and another way of developing themselves mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. so what are the services uh, provided by your NGO to youths we are one of the most known yes. <laughs> services uh, organization in Egypt. We work on charity as well, but mm. the main thing is that we're one of the famous ones that work on uh, education as well. Mm -hmm. And actually, that's why we're pursuing youth these days, because once there is education, there is a way for development, there are things like this. But of course, when it comes to charity, we do it all. I mean, from cancer patients to uh, services to plantations to water sanitation, uh, child services in all means, and definitely education. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is where we're one of the strongest. Yeah. Education. Education and further studies, along with giving them, I mean, solutions for a better future. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think uh, the, the issue with youth uh, starts uh, a little bit earlier than even uh, university time. Uh, as they, uh, during high school, they experience this uh, confusion. Uh, uh, what are they going to do in their future? Uh, which uh, major of study they, uh, they have to decide on? And they're usually puzzled during this stage. So uh, how can you help them? And what advice do you give them? We actually do a program for this. I mean, it's not a kind of advice, which is called the shadow program, where you actually have part of our NGO that serves uh, kids from, uh, I don't, I don't want to say kids, young men and women, aging between 12 and 18, which actually gives them a guidance uh, with internship programs, and we call it shadow days, where let's say they want to be a doctor, they want to be a lawyer, they want to be a journalist, uh, a broadcaster, whatever. They go and they stay with this person. We do have lots of those, I mean, members at the NGO, so accordingly, they can actually just go and spend the day where they see how the work does, how the work goes. So because people usually have fantasies about how life should be later on and then yes. they just come to the mere uh -huh. uh, current situation. So when they do these shadows, actually they get to shift at that uh -huh. time. But still, you give them all of this and then they go into uni, university, and then they still study things and then they don't find themselves or they find them themselves too much into something that they didn't think they will excel at mm -hmm. and accordingly they change they, careers. they change careers we find so many people now after a year or two in university you know they do just shift from Th they change their major field of study and from sciences to non-sciences from sure I mean they go yes, all the way yes, I've seen a lot of cases uh, changing from uh, engineering to psychology for yes example, which is a totally different uh, yeah but actually I think it's also part of our culture now we're acquiring how to adapt to this I mean before that I mean like 20 years ago if you would have been studying engineering and you go to your parents and tell them no I'm shifting to psychology that would be a big taboo no one would accept that Definitely. now we're very open to this mm -hmm. and with all the digital marketing social media things mm -hmm. people are much more open to suggestions and changes mm -hmm. so uh, what are the needs of the market now if you want to give an advice to uh, youth who are still studying uh, uh, how do you see the market needs? I think it goes all on entrepreneurship now. It's entrepreneurship. not more, yes. Yeah. And it's all, I mean, um, sometimes I get shocked with, uh, I find some youth, they're not very much into computers or into, mm. the, I call it the language of the, of the rain. I mean, you cannot, yeah, you cannot just not be fully acquainted to this. Or you find them so much dependent on social media. I mean, the extremes are not good. So mm. if there is an advice about that, it's like, see whatever is there. Give yourself uh, several internships while you were in high school and then in your first few years of university. I think this way they can really be very um, achieving and persistent when it comes to what they want to do with their careers. Yeah. But as a market and what it needs, it's variant. I mean, every year it varies from one side to the other. I mean, mm -hmm. there isn't a single way where yes. you can say things. Yeah. Uh, also, the media has a very important role to play with regards to guiding youth. Uh, how can uh, the media help the youth in determining uh, what kind of uh, uh, major field of study they would like to continue or uh, what career they would like to uh, pursue? 
actually have to think about this because I can ask you the same question back. <laughs> but I think it's all about giving them the opportunity to get exposed to things that they, I mean, that they cannot see. I mean, with the PLP, with the conferences like the one of last week, mm -hmm. um, having this uh, and having it shown to people all over media channels, mm -hmm. then you give the people who didn't attend a chance to see how things are going and how discussions mm -hmm. are taking place. Mm -hmm. And this is, again, you're giving them a way of exposure. Mm -hmm. But other than this, actually, I think the question goes back to you. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I, I think it should be through uh, programs uh, having opening, open discussions with youth. Yes. Uh, and from this, they can dis uh, um, find their way out uh, through the discussions taking place uh, among youth. Well, it's, it's usually a dual problem because when mm -hmm. you give them the discussions this way and with no guidance and they don't have the experience of how the market is going, mm -hmm. then how will they guide themselves? It's always, um, um, I mean, a ping pong game as we call it and you're really not sure of how it goes. But at the end, I believe whenever they have the chance to talk themselves out and I mean to express what they need and to show what they do, I mean they can come out with general discussions between them in a productive way. Yeah. Also, you mentioned the, the uh, non-profit organization or the NGO that you're working with. Uh, we would like to tell our audience how can they reach the shadow, uh, uh, the shadow people? Day, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, is there a website or so? There is a website. It's, it's an international organization. Anyways, okay. I mean with a very okay, big so army. They, they can Egypt, reach yeah. it on, on They can uh, reach on it internet. everywhere. And they'll be hearing about it. I mean, they've already been hearing about this seminar mm -hmm. that's coming up in two, three days. And with the NGO's diverse actions, mm -hmm. I mean, there is always a way to reach it. And we actually have more than 3,000 members in Egypt now. Mm -hmm. So it's one of the big ones, let's say. <laughs> So let's t uh, talk more about uh, this uh, event and uh, who are the main speakers and uh, how do you communicate uh, with youths in this day? Well, that's why we have it divided into four sessions. I yes. mean an opening session with a prominent uh, media person mm. yes. uh, from a prominent, uh, one of, I mean one of our main media alliance and yes. newspapers. He's going to be there discussing the main thing again along with one of our members mm. where they are going to see how we, we can meet up into something that that's very common to show what the NGO does mm. and what media and how media is affecting the youth and so on and yes. so forth. That's like the official um, mm. part of the of the day and then we have two other sessions that are one is directed towards uh, new businesses with young entrepreneurs I mean early 30s that have had a very um, I mean not weird but a very um, out of the box idea mm. um, 10 years ago and they kept on working on their dream until they reached it and now it's one of the very prominent businesses we have three of those and then we have along the, uh, the lines of uh, media, the lines of applications and mobiles and websites yes. and all of that and the third one is about the platforms mm -hmm. where you have uh, job allocating platforms. Okay, I, I'm not supposed to say the names, yes. I mean, but mm -hmm. yeah, that's what they are doing. And then the session following that, it's all about startups. I mean, very young people, 20s, early 20s, they've had an idea and they've just worked on it and it boomed. So they're just giving the youth an idea that uh, it doesn't have to be a big business, it doesn't mm -hmm. have to be a big, um, I mean, um, uh, capital when it comes to money and you can just pursue whatever you want. Mm -hmm. fi finalizing the day yes. with a uh, uh, special, I mean, human development uh, mm -hmm. session where we have someone talking to them about a very good experience that they've had. It's one of the major businesses now in the country and there are three youth that who started it and very young men and uh, they just insisted on doing something different. Mm -hmm. And then we have one of the further studies and training organizations sending us one of their prominent speakers to do an interactive session with the, uh, the youth attending. Mm -hmm. We're mm -hmm. expecting 200 to 300 people. So mm -hmm. that's why so it's a huge thing. So you are pushing youths to entrepreneurship? in this conference. Mm -hmm. Because entrepreneurship actually covers it all. I mean, yes. once uh, if they want to start to do just a small business with their mm -hmm. computers or a big thing with a factory and so... Not wait for a job. No, don't wait for a job. Mm -hmm. Don't wait. I mean, if a job comes along, of course, that's a good yes. thing. But don't work, uh, don't wait for it. I mean, just go and whenever it comes, I mean, 
all of them now can do two things together and sometimes yes. three. Yeah, it's true. Yes, and, and we've heard recently about uh, new entrepreneurs here in Egypt uh, doing uh, some, uh, uh, they're going now international, brand names, new brand names, Egyptian yeah, brand yeah. names. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, they, they are going international now yes. and uh, they're very successful actually. Very much, very much. And they are... And they're again, very young, actually. Again, it's exposure. And they've just, you know, went into a challenging thing. Mm -hmm. And they just kept up to it. Yes. I mean, yeah. So, Engineer Dina uh, will have a short break and uh, we'll be back. Thank so, you. stay tuned. قالوا عني زمان موم بيضيع وقت لا يوم سلم ولا استسلم ووقعت وقمت وامبارح غير دلوقت هنا قلبي من جوا ده اللي بيديني القوة في طريقي مشيت واديني سبت لن ننجح الا بيكون من هنا قررت بعد ما فكرت امشي عالصعب وعرفت انا لما كبرت ان اللي تفكر في ازمه كان خوفك منه ملوش لازمه وقاديك عالصعب قدرت واللي زمان ضحكوا عليك شوفهم دلوقتي بيداروا كسوفهم Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You're still watching The Breakfast Show live on Nile TV International. And uh, still continuing our discussion, uh, Engineer Dina, I would like you to tell me more about uh, how can we help youth develop their capabilities in, uh, on different levels. I mean, uh, with regards to uh, uh, their education, uh, their uh, future jobs and careers, uh, uh, what can be done to help youth, uh, empower youth? I think empowering it all comes from giving them a voice to just air out what they need. Um, I'm just going to suggest uh, uh, an idea when we had the break, it just popped into my mind. Um, uh, can I ask you, how many youth, um, I mean um, uh, invitees or whoever, that you get to have a week per week, like two, three, or even lesser than this in a number? In this show or in yes, the in, other I mean, days? In, yeah, let's talk about this show. Uh, every week? Every week? Maybe 14. 15. 14 very youth people? I mean young people? Young people, no. Ah. We, we, we have a, a program dedicated for youth that uh, is it's a weekly program and each yes. week we get uh, around So what about if we do a program together since I do have, uh, I mean the NGO has like a list of those for startups even that we were not lucky to mm -hmm. have them as speakers on our seminars mm -hmm. but because of 
traveling due to, you know, they're very busy these days when mm -hmm. it comes to the young age. Mm -hmm. So what if we provide you with this list and you get yes. every other day one of them to speak about it? I mean, they'll be... It's a great idea. Yeah. You know why? Mm -hmm. Because when they speak, actually, they speak in a different tone than when I speak to them. I'm much older now. So I just tell you my observations, but then they are the ones into it. Mm -hmm. They'll talk with even more enthusiasm about what they do. So, they, and yes, you want them to come and yes. speak about their own experience yes. and how did they succeed. Yes, and uh, to in inspire others and accordingly to inspire with others. this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What so about such a thing? Yes. You know, because I think it's not only a weekly program. I mean, as you've seen, how many seminars have, been, have we been handling in the country, I mean, even on governmental uh, level or with the PLP, we're handling like two a year, if not more. Okay, so if this is the, the ratio or how we're supposed to proceed, so let's do it with every single show. I mean, okay, we don't want it to be all into that, but I mean, we can have like a 20% of the audience mm -hmm. is usually out of the youth. 30, I, I don't have the statistics on that, but I mean, it's just off my mind. So if we have a speaker to talk to them, Long the same way, why not? I do have the list, yes. I'm ready. Yes. <laughs> yes. We're ready also. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's, that's a very good idea. idea. Yes. Uh, also, uh, uh, engineer uh, uh, Dalia with uh, Dina, yes. <laughs> uh, we don't want to uh, uh, ignore uh, the youths who uh, live in rural areas, and how can we help them? You have to give them a chance to speak. Yes. I mean, yeah, they have to. Do you to have a program for them in your yes, uh, because, because organization? Yes, because with our NGO, we do have clubs in very remote yes. and rural areas, and it's actually we have activities throughout, yes, with all the activities. And definitely, the working hand is usually the youth. Yes. I mean, let's say if we're pursuing a project that goes into education or mm. water sanitation or whatever, I mean, yes, um, our members will be the ones organizing it will be the ones uh, getting the funds for it but actually you will go down and do things it's either the the youth who are part of the organization or we do have a program internally that's called community corporations mm. where you go to another NGO or a facilitation mm. uh, office or uh, any entity at such a rural area and you get their youth to work with you hand in hand because they know the houses, they know the people over there, you know, it's very family oriented when it comes to rural areas. So you have to get someone from in between just to get them to, I mean, even to trust uh, what you're doing for them. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Right. Uh, Engineer Dina, talking about uh, um, SMEs or uh, small and medium enterprises and their importance, how do you see the importance of the role of the government in supporting youth in uh, uh, SMEs? Well, I think it's all about giving them the, um, I mean, this is again off my mind, it's all about giving them all the permissions that they, they can have and assisting with whatever that's hindering them at the beginning of such a business, mm -hmm. which is usually the money, the funds, the allocation of where the product yes. should be with the SME, mm -hmm. and how to later on just spread it out. I mean, you get, sometimes people do have the businesses, they do have the SME, they do have the product out, but then they cannot really sell it very well, although they have good surveys of the market. Mm -hmm. But again, this is where experience comes in. Mm -hmm. So if you actually have this governed by, gov by governmental uh, officers, that would be, I mean, for assistance, that mm -hmm. would be of great help. Yeah. So uh, uh, in your opinion, what are the challenges uh, that face youths nowadays? Having a job, mm. economical, um, let's not say uh, difficulties, but I mean, it's a very demanding life now. Yes. And they don't settle for less. I mean, with all uh, categories and with mm. all standards, no, everyone now, the ambition is just, it goes throughout the roof. I mean, mm. they don't stop at the limit. So sometimes they don't have the means to support such an ambition. Mm. This is the biggest challenge they have. Mm -hmm. And I think now with the new uh, mega projects currently taking mm -hmm. place in the country and the new administrative capital, there are uh, many uh, job opportunities now uh, for qualified youth uh, and also uh, for uh, less qualified also to work. So how do you see this? I have, I have a point on this. Yes. We were just actually discussing it the other day. Mm. Um, I mean, my daughter is 17, so yes. she's again into the mm. age of she wants to know what mm. to do. And she's telling me, you know what, there aren't enough jobs. No, that's not true. There are jobs that would fit people more and over, I mean. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, it's not necessarily what you have in mind. I mean, every now, I, I believe that all the youth now, or let's not say all, but many of them do have... A, a targeted aim that they want to reach very quickly. Mm 
-hmm. So then they want, out to, uh, they want to go out of university and find a tailored job that would match what they need. Yes. This is not life. I mean, uh, with all of us here, even in this room, I don't think that when we started our careers, that's what, uh, where we thought will be at today, 10 years later, 15. I don't want us to make uh, ourselves very old, but anyways, mm -hmm. I mean, we never thought of this at that time. Now the youth are not very opened into such challenges. Mm -hmm. Actually, those who succeed, are very open-minded about it and they don't mind shifting once and twice and even three times mm -hmm. and business with the other and running two businesses together mm -hmm. or three they have to start time. with any job and then they move on from exactly. one job to another exactly to find mm -hmm. themselves mm -hmm. in your opinion what are the most flourishing uh, and growing sectors now in the country uh, where uh, they, they can provide uh, job opportunities for the youth I believe it's contracting, yes. more or less, and media, with all the social media platforms getting along, which I'm not really very good when it comes to, I mean, when I, when I sit with, with the youth, with the think tanks we provide with such seminars, and what's your job, so they go along, and I have this platform for mothers to do so and so, or for so, I tell her, does this need the platform? Actually, it needs. When I go onto these websites or platforms or whatever, you know, I just find another area of businesses that for my age, it's not what I'm aiming for, but actually they are too much into what's the market into now, and they provide people with what they want, and it's booming businesses at the end, and they get them good income. On the social media. On the social media. Yeah. Definitely. And how do you see the role of the private sector in supporting youths? The same if not mm. even more, because with the private sector, you actually get to have more freedom to mm. give people opportunities or to invest in people whom, I mean, sometimes we get to recruit with my yes. business, interior designer. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have an engineer. You usually have the case that you have to have an engineer to be an interior designer. Yes. There are some jobs within our business, I mm. mean, I'm speaking from yes. personal experience, that actually requires someone who's very dedicated and with a good taste. And yes. then the Talented. experience, yeah, and then the experience, they actually come. not even a talent, just a hard worker who wants to study or who wants to pursue or to go into further education, even by expertise. People mm -hmm. can do that, but people don't believe in themselves when they are at a young age. So you think that the private sector should start believe in uh, young people and give them a chance? Yes, definitely. Yes, not only yes. old ones who have experience. No, <coughs> and I mean now when you look at CVs, I yes. think we never say I want someone who's had five years of experience in the market. Not you anymore. know, there was no. It's not anymore over there. I mean, you look at where they've uh, where they've worked previously, mm. their experiences in the market, what have they done, and then you get to see the communication skills. Yes, this is what's mm. very dependent. Mm. I mean, you depend a lot on it when you're recruiting someone in the market today. Mm -hmm. And how can you develop the youth communication skills? Uh, by training. Definitely by training and by giving them exposure to go. I mean, now you'll find so many b um, huge meetings for, I mean, for corporations. You'll find like 10 or 12 older people and then two or three who are there. Usually these three, I mean, 10 years ago or even maybe more than that, they used to sit there, just uh, mm. visualize, write minutes, uh, uh, take into action the action plan later on. Now, actually, they voice their, uh, they, I mean, they let their voice out. And they say, no, we don't agree, we don't do that. When you give such an opportunity, this is actually what develops into a good manager who is at a young age. Mm -hmm. So and it, yes, right, go ahead. <laughs> no, no. Uh, uh, how can we uh, help the youth continue their uh, uh, small uh, uh, projects? I mean, some of them quit in the middle, or they, mm -hmm. they don't feel that they can continue because they face a lot of obstacles. <laughs> yes. If we talk in percentage, how many continue and how many c quit? Actually, just like that thinking, I think it's a half-half thing. It's all about persistence, mm -hmm. and sometimes they. I, they have to quit. I mean, sometimes people are, are a bit stubborn with mm -hmm. their dream, but then they have to, you know, like adjust the dream. I think this is where Apple company comes into yes. mind and things like that, where owners had to think in a way, and then if actually the, the business would have gone down unless they've shifted mm -hmm. into another medium with their thinking and how they want to continue that. Mm -hmm. If we can assist them on such a thing, then they can overcome an obstacle. But then it's, again, about how they... Um, I mean, how strong they are to stand for the challenge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's all a challenge.
So uh, how do you evaluate the government efforts to uh, facilitate uh, uh, startups uh, projects and to uh, give more uh, help to uh, young people who want to start their own jobs? No, I think it's very good and very supportive. They are supportive giving them more reasons. facilities. They are giving them more them. facilities already. Um, actually, I'm not into which facilities and the percentage for yes. that. But from what I can hear is that now, even with the funding, even mm. with the placement of businesses, uh, with the allocation and permissions and things, I hear it's a lot easier nowadays to manage many things like that. But again, you do have governmental actions, I mean, where you cannot just go into a direction or just... Um, I mean, uh, facilitate something that you don't know how it's going to add up or end up at the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, also, as part of the youth empowerment and uh, uh, doing a lot of activities uh, for the youth, we've seen the continuous dialogue between uh, President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi and the youth through the youth conferences and uh, the session Ask the President. Uh, which, it, it, which provides uh, a, an opportunity for a dialogue, a direct dialogue between the president and the youth. How important is this in your opinion? Very important. I've seen it very successful as well. I mean, I was impressed with the questions and how strongly they are. Uh, I mean, they, they're, they feel very proud doing it and they do it in a very good way. And I mean, they are very uh, organized in how they want their questions. Mm. And even when, <laughs> when he answers them and then, they, uh, I mean, they don't get the full answer they need, they go again and they ask, the rest of the question was so and so and so. I mean, that's, that's, I mean that gives them, um, let's say what, better incentive in what they should expect for their futures. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, uh, um, uh, Engineer Dina, um, can you uh, tell us some tips for youths who are now losing hope and they don't believe in themselves? How can they develop their skills? Uh, how can they start a, a new job and a new life? Well, actually, if they are that down yes. where they can think, I think then we should have a psychologist do the yes. job. But I mean, if it's out of providing, you can always show them good, uh, I mean, good examples of things uh, like that have happened week, around yes. them or get them to talk to a person mm. who've had such a mishap mm. in their careers and how they really actually re-establish um, themselves. And then that works with many of them because they see there is another future. Actually, that's, that's part of one of the sessions we're having this Saturday mm. and the one that we've had a year ago as well. Mm -hmm. Because of the mishaps, people lose, I mean, their vision and what they want to do mm -hmm. if they are actually, uh, again, uh, with, uh, faced with so many obstacles. Then they mm -hmm. get to really uh, just give up and just give up their careers and they don't want to continue. And then they cannot restart again in that career. Mm -hmm. So actually, if you catch them at such a, a time and give them a facilitation to fix, that's, that's one of the best hopes we, mm. I mean, we hope that we can assist with. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, do you think that challenges uh, facing youth are the same challenges or common challenges facing African youth, uh, facing uh, world youth, or we have different challenges here in Egypt? Uh, cultures, by the way, because they're very variant, actually tell you that you have to do that, and they put you in different ways and they put you in different things. But at the end, You'll find them all over the world talking about different careers, mm -hmm. how they can do this. They're faced with such a challenge. They cannot continue with the mishaps. I mean, it's even with, uh, with children now. It's not only with, uh, I mean, the youth or the young men and women. It's even with children now. Uh, everyone wants to do three or four uh, athletic activities, two or three mental activities. They want to go out for three or four areas. I mean, they don't stop. It's not about asking. It's about ambition. Mm -hmm. I think so. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, Engineer Dina Odb, Interior Designer, thank you very much for joining thank us you. and very, uh, uh, thank you very much for your insight and your thank presence. You. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Engineer Regina. And uh, now, uh, the viewers, will go and visit one of our uh, touristic destinations with our colleague Dina Yunus, so stay tuned.